Uh, yeah, that one. I present him. All right, great. Good. Yeah, congratulations on the nomination. Thank you. That means a lot. Your life has changed dramatically in the last three years and then particularly in these last couple, three months. No doubt. Okay? Yes, not lying. It's been a big difference. What's it mean to you, especially these last, last two, three months of your life? It is a good reward for the patients of being in a maximum security penitentiary. You know, all the times when I could have acted up or all the times when I could have went one way and I was like, I know this ain't forever. I'm going to just ride this out and I know it's going to be my time again. And now it is my time again and I appreciate everybody that wrote me letters telling me to be patient and wait. Everybody that, you know, helped me to see that, you know, as long as you got your faith, you know, you can ride anything. There's, there's nothing too scary where I'm going to just give up, you know what I mean? I've seen hell and everything after it, so. It's been some very interesting articles out recently. This man here is responsible, Papa G, getting a lot of press out about you all. Let me ask a comment about one of the things that I read. Um, certainly you're here at the family now. You all call this a family. Mm -hmm. What's it mean for you to be here with death row? It means that I have to give my, hundred, my 110 percent so that all the rappers under me can give their 110 percent so that everybody else, all the peer rappers like the Dog Pound and Snoop to give their 110%, mm -hmm. should give his 110%, Papa G give his 110%. And that's what makes Death Row, Death Row. That's yeah. what makes us have record-breaking album sales and things like that, is we give 110%. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's good. It just means that, you know, I'm somewhere where if you're persistent and efficient, you get rewarded. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody wishes for. Your focus seems clear. I think, uh, like you said, being in maximum security certainly does a lot of things for one's head and one's focus and, and desires and dreams. Um, you come out, you hear a lot of uh, controversy going on right now about rap, just the Time Warner dropping Interscope and a lot of things that have resulted from people saying it's a bad image, it's bad for young people. Tell us your comments on that. i said so many comments on this, but basically it's a hypocritical view because what you're saying is it's okay for us to live in the dirt, in the gutter, in less than human um, conditions, but it's not okay for us to tell people that we're living in these conditions. Everything was cool, you know, the ghetto was okay, it was, it was, it was, live, it was um, habitable until mm -hmm. we started talking about exactly the, uh, what were the repercussions of living this type of lifestyle, what happens when you live in this kind of environment, what, what type of person it changes you into. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden it's like you can't talk about that. But this is what we live in. This is we don't have a, a, a choice. You know what I mean? It's either we really kill people, do dope, sell dope, and have murders and do all this crazy stuff, or we talk about the fact that we get we got so close, man. If it wasn't for this rap thing, we would really have to do A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's not good. That's not nothing to look up to. But that's the truth. That's how it is. You know, every human being inside your chest or your stomach or whatever, we all given from God. Um, the survival instinct and everybody has to to live self-determination you have to live you have to be able to live and survive and and live like a human being not like an animal so whatever it takes to live like that is what happens whatever it takes if you put Bob Dole in those conditions he would he would do the same thing so would see Dolores Tucker if she wasn't so rich she didn't have the pearls and she didn't have the NAACP backing her up and all these conventions and coalitions backing up and she was by herself and she was on welfare, she would love our music because she would know what this music breathes. She would know where we from, what we talking about. Mm -hmm. But from where she at, she can't understand and not understand where they coming from because now that I got money, it's hard for me to hear a lot of the stuff that we got to listen to. But I can't see, I can't be a hypocrite though. I got to understand it's, it's only a few dollars that's keeping me from being that right there. Mm. Image is everything. Papa G is taking good care of you guys, you know. Tell me what it means to have George Price behind you all out there in terms of publicity, really getting the word out and the truth as you all want to speak it. What does that mean to you? I think that along with the other artists on Death Row, Snoop, Dog Pound, Trey, everybody, Nate, we're all outstanding in our field. And I think that Suge, in terms of being a manager, a CEO, he's outstanding in his field. I think that Papa G is just... Um, keeping that tradition along by being outstanding in the field of publicity and, and getting our, the things that we have in our head to the heads of millions of people and letting them see what we see and, and look at it how we want them to look at it. 
you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the vibe cover, that's how we feel, like a mob, like a family. You know, we want people to see that. Not mob like guns and things, but mob like family. Like, you say to do this, we do this. Mm -hmm. And like with the New York Times cover, that's like, the ghetto coming home picture, you know what I mean? With the cash and all of that. Every time somebody come out of jail, they got to take those kind of pictures. They got to get their humanity back from all the days they had to bend over and have some man looking in they, you know what I mean? For all the times they had to strip naked, for all the times they had to cut their visit short and couldn't hold their girl and couldn't kiss their girl. Now you get to floss like that, you know what I mean? Now you get to act like that. And it's not because I'm going nanny 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 to other people, it's because I'm doing this for the guards, you know, for the, for the people who thought I was guilty, for everything. For all the people who, who didn't believe that it could come to this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, they could shoot me five times, call me a rapist and throw me in jail and I'm gonna bounce back. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna give up, you know what I mean? That shows the um, resilience of a young black male and a death row inmate in particular. Oh, uh, miss your leg. Nah, she got uh, Nah, she uh, too. All about the uh, track and then pockets putting down. Yeah. Well, you know, it's too tight. So, yeah, it's it's too straight. Straight. so that's pretty straight. We're gonna go in there uh, probably uh, next week. I got the we're gonna do a video in a couple of weeks, man. You know, we're gonna hook it up. Hook it up. Let's see, we're gonna get ready to do for the movie shit, though. So you can see, Death Row got the movie things popping. Yeah, everybody it. else. Yeah, everybody else doing this music. We got the movies. Well, we got two strikes, out. none left. Two strikes, none left. Get Yellow politics. politics. Movies, yeah. Death Row we know, yeah, we're doing some movies. Yeah. That's interesting. I know I'm listening. So, this so the thing that we're doing with movies, like we're doing uh, Two Strikes, None Left, right? It's going to be starring Tupac and Snoop Dogg. And, it, and the concept of the movie is going to be an action comedy. And you know, like the third, Three Strikes is happening everywhere, all around, everywhere, right? right. So that's what's going on. But see, they're going to get out of jail, and like everybody's going to be betting against them the saying how long they're gonna stay on the street before they go back to jail. So they're gonna be trying to do everything they can in the world to keep from going to jail. The person who writing the movie is DJ Pooh. Tupac writing some stuff in there. Um, Snoop got some input in there. And uh, yeah, there you go. He got some input in there. And you know, Pooh the one did the whole thing on Friday. Yeah, I know. But they stole it from him though. Yeah, but I was gonna say, y'all yeah, Friday. You know, though, yeah, huh? mm -hmm. that was his worst work. Mm -hmm. He got some way better stuff than mm -hmm. that, but he did the whole thing from Friday, but they mm -hmm. took it from him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't give him all his credit. So, you know, once again, you know, Death Row will make sure he get his credit mm -hmm. and make sure it's served. Mm -hmm. Definitely doing that. Hammer, you feel at home? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, then she'll go back 10 years, so, you know, it's another day. I'll let you all have just a little more conversation and then we're done. Right, Lose right. It. You're not really doing the audio anyway, huh? No, you're not Mike. That's why I don't want right, to get too right, much. If you right. talk to him, I can pick it up. If you right, talk right. about this way, yeah. he's still Mike. So just a little yeah, bit more, and we just get a little shot from the same and that's it. Right. So, Alba, you know everybody talking bullshit, but you fit death row because you wear the right jewelry. You <laughs> love cars like us. That's right. You like to work hard. That's right. And as you see, you ride with Oakland. You go to Oakland. A hard old town. And you know, we got over here. We got Compton, Long Beach, good old Watts. That's all I'm Hooked up with 619 Dago. Oh, that's right. Dago. 415 510. It's all hooked up. Penitentiary hookup, huh? Penitentiary hookup. All right, cool, man. Get on time. Good.